If I have a headache, first thing I do is drink about four cups of water and I can identify, am I dehydrated? Was it the number one cause of headaches is dehydration? Or should I actually grab the ibuprofen? So typically, when people increase their water to a gallon a day, they see amazing benefits in their skin. I'll be 51 in a couple months, completing my 51st year. And when I started drinking a gallon of water a day, slowly building up, my skin got better. I was, well, they say, water is like lotion for the body on the inside. You look better, you feel better, your digestive issues can improve as well with the elimination. 16 cups is one gallon. It's boring, I get it. So typically I say, get a cute carafe. I make cucumber melon water in one carafe. I make strawberry mint water in another carafe. I'll make apple ginger water in a third carafe. And my favorite is tomato basil water. You wouldn't think that a savory tomato basil water is delicious, but it is. And take as long as you want. I put this in the week one, but you can call that step one. These steps in my program build upon each other. Once you've mastered the water, or you feel ready to move on to part two, then you move on to step two. I'm gonna pass out some snacks. And some of these are doubled up, so feel free to have more than one. Thank you. I'm gonna start with that. Who wants to do number two? Read it out loud. I give up all wheat products and still drink a gallon of water a day. Give up all wheat products and still drink your gallon of water a day. Why do you think I would want you to give up wheat products? Anybody? Yes, my darling. Um, I've heard that it causes inflammation in the body. If you have arthritis, joint pain, swelling of the hands, working out when you're way younger than I am and still feeling like crap afterwards, I would suggest the first step after lubricating your body with the water is giving up wheat because gluten comes from the Latin word for glue. And it's highly processed. Most wheat products are highly processed. You're not going into the forest and picking a wheat and chewing on that wheat berry. It has an outside shell, just like beans, an endosperm. Why? It wants to procreate. It's protecting itself. The more you grind wheat, the higher the sugar index, the glycemic index. The same teaspoon of sugar that you eat, whether it's ground up from wheat or whether it's ground up from sugar cane, it's still going to move through the body the same. But when you take wheat and you grind it up, wheat becomes higher sugar and higher glycemic index, the more fine the powder is that you grind the flour. That same teaspoon of wheat becomes higher on the glycemic index, which yes, causes systemic inflammation. It's not necessary, you may not have an allergy, but our body, ancient body, caveman body, was a hunter and gatherer in order to survive. They weren't picking wild wheat and grinding it and baking it. That's something we do. So try that week two, or maybe it's gonna take you four months to get off the wheat. And there are salad dressings. A lot of salad dressings have wheat, soy, and gluten. Soy sauce has wheat in it, so therefore it has gluten in it, unless you buy the one that specifically says gluten-free. Week three. Anybody wanna shout out week three? Give up all grains and still drink a gallon of water a day. So after you've mastered, it doesn't have to be week three, it could be month three. Maybe you're gonna take six months to be strong enough to say I'm not tempted by the cookies, pies, pastries, Twinkies, donuts, love my donut. Maybe it's gonna take you a long time to get over that and that's perfectly okay. Then once you've mastered that step and you're still drinking your gallon, then you try and give up all grains, and it's only for a week or longer. So you're building upon, and the reason is grains make you crave sugar because it turns into sugar. So let's just talk about this. So there's a lot of 
so-called healthy foods that aren't so healthy. Hearty, baked wheat snack crackers, zero trans fat, naturally flavored. On your pamphlet, I show you the secret names for MSG, and one of the odd ingredients that they'll put on there is naturally flavored, or spices, or naturally spiced. So this is my favorite one, because this is really special. It's honey bunches of oats with Greek yogurt and mixed berries, whole grain, two unique granolas. Wow, this has a lot of whole grain and a touch of wildflower honey. So I'm gonna pass out these other things. There's a very deceiving hearty baked wheat cracker, a wonderful naturally select fruit and nut trail mix, and California Coloma grated Parmesan cheese. Unless it says raw and you're shaving it yourself or it's been shaved, typically there's anti-caking agents in Parmesan cheese. All right, who wants to read week four? Yes, sir. Reduce fruit to one to two times a day. Always keeping previous changes. Reduce fruits to one to two times a day, always keeping the previous changes. So if you're trying to get off the sugar wagon, like a lot of us are, this step by step by step reducing it to one to two times a day with the fruit will help you with the cravings. Week five, Joel. Reduce fruit to one or two times a week. Right, so after you've gotten that under control, and remember this is only for a week or longer. It may take you a month or two months to keep on drinking your water and reducing the fruit just so you get over the sugar cravings. I'm not saying it's forever. I'm saying try and see what happens in your life. So now I'm gonna pass you out the alternative to all the sweet stuff. So this is gonna be a carrot, raw almond butter, and homemade preserves. And I put it instead of on a cracker or bread, it's like peanut butter and jelly, but it's raw almond butter, because when you have raw nuts and raw seeds, your body can absorb them better than if they're roasted. So if you want a treat, this is the treat to have rather than a cookie or a Twinkie. <laughs> oh, raw cheese. This is a trend that's become popular in the past three years. Most dairy products are homogenized and pasteurized. Louis de Pasteur, because there was no refrigeration when he was around, he created a heat treatment of all dairy products that would kill most of the um, germs that were making people sick, most of the bacteria. And it was caused because there wasn't any refrigeration. Can you read number six? Yeah. Change your oils to only healthy fats I mentioned earlier in my Facebook page. So I do this on my website and my books and on my Facebook page. Change your oils. What am I talking about? All the oils that are in junk food and processed food are hydrogenated oils. So hydrogenated oils are oils that are heat treated to the point where the molecular structure of the oil changes and it adds to shelf life. And your arteries don't know what to do with them. You're right, you're brilliant. <laughs> your arteries don't know what to do with it and neither does the rest of your body so it turns it into bad cholesterol, or it turns it into abnormal body fat. So change your oils. What are good oils? Olive oil. Avocado and avocado oil. What are good oils? Coconut oil. See, we let eggs out of jail about 12 years ago. I saw those commercials. Now we're letting coconut oil and butter out of jail. Canola oil is a highly toxic oil, and I'm glad you are telling me it's a good oil. For years, I only bought canola oil. Canola comes from a plant called the rapeseed. The rapeseed plant makes rapeseed oil. It's Canada's number one export. When they decided to farm rapeseed oil, Canada did not want the word rape on their largest export. So they changed it to Canada oil, canola oil. 
but it is one of the shelf stabilizing oils that they, in order to get the oil from that tiny seed, they must process it so much that it turns from a good oil to a bad oil. When they add hydrogen to oils, it makes it thick like Crisco, not lard that's natural from an animal. I had some work bad for you. I don't use canola oil anymore. I cook with coconut oil. I cook with olive oil, macadamia nut oil, walnut oil. If you're gonna use extra virgin olive oil, do not heat your pan on high. If you're baking with it, don't go above 450 degrees because you don't want the smoke point of the olive oil to turn from a good oil to a toxic oil. You don't want the molecules to change the chemistry of it. So typically, I'll cook with a different oil and then add my extra virgin olive oil afterwards in order to get that olive oil flavor. Number seven. Would you like to read number seven? Sure. Thank you, loud and clear. Week seven, no more added sugar in any form, no honey or agave or cake sugar. Sugar keeps your body from absorbing the vitamins from the vegetables that you eat. So if you eat high fat, good fat, your body can absorb the nutrition from the vegetables that you eat alongside with it even more. It becomes more bioavailable. And sugar robs your body of the bioavailability. And remember, it's only for a week. And you've already done all the other shifts. So by the time you get to there, you go, I could try that for a week. So what am I supposed to have? Sweet and low? Splenda? Chemicals? I've discovered through my work at the Hilton two items that people have told me about. One is called Lakanto. I buy the golden brown variety. This is only available online. I don't work for this company, but I wrote them a letter telling them how much I love their stuff. The golden brown variety of Lakanto, it's Chinese monk fruit, La Hangao. And in Japan, they have figured out how to dehydrate it, crystallize it, and turn it into a brown sugar variety. <laughs> they also sell a white sugar variety, but for my white sugar variety, because it's really expensive, I use Xyla, which is made from a birch bark tree. This one, Lakanto, looks, smells, and tastes like brown sugar, and I'm gonna pass this around. I want you to have a tablespoon or a teaspoon or put some in your hand. And I'm also gonna pass around the Xyla and I want you to do the same thing. Smell it, taste it. To me, Lakanto brown, it tastes like brown sugar, but cold on the tongue. So that's why I want you to experience this. All right, let's move on to week eight. Anybody wanna read week eight? Thank you. Which is raw dairy and pastured eggs if you regularly consume them. If you regularly consume meat or dairy, make sure they're pastured, not pasteurized, and grass-fed. Remember, when we eat any animal, we eat what the animal ate. So if chickens who are not vegetarians are out in the fields and they're eating bugs and berries and grass and nuts and seeds and doing their chicken thing, chickens aren't meant to eat grains and corn and all that stuff. The chicken feed that the farmers give the chickens, chickens get stressed out, their cortisol level goes up, they're getting fat, we're collecting their stress hormones. Same thing with cows that are on feedlots and they're grain fed when that's not in their natural diet or in their natural habitat. You ate what the animal ate. If you can't afford 100% grass fed, grass finished, and you have to buy factory farm meats, then I suggest get the leanest cuts possible. Why? Why am I saying the opposite? If you cannot afford 100% grass-fed, grass-finished meats, buy the leanest cuts of regular store meat. Why do you think that is? All the toxicity is in the fat. All the toxic stuff, and of course the fear, right, creates a higher cortisol level in the animal, all the bad hormones, if it's a factory farm feedlot animal, they call it CAFO, then you buy the leanest cuts of meat. 
If it's 100% grass fed, 100% grass finished, you can buy the fattiest cuts of meat because all the goodness is in the saturated fat on the marbled meat and it'll help you absorb the nutrition from the veggies alongside of it. Does that make sense? Number nine. Yes, my darling, please. Very good, give up beans and legumes. And it's only for a week. Why would I wanna give up beans and legumes when they're full of high protein? Any guesses about what we talked about? They're also full of carbs. They're also full of carbs. They're, they're highly processed in order to be eaten. 30%. Only 30% is protein. <laughs> and you may not get all of that. That heavy, heavy, hard endosperm, it's protecting itself from being extinct. Does that make sense? And I always say, live by the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 eat clean and green, 20% party like a rock star. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> She's gonna party like a rock star today. I'm not a vegetarian, but are they healthier vegetarians? I'm not vegetarian, so I can't speak to that, but I did gain 55 pounds when I was vegetarian for 19 years. Yeah, I was vegetarian for 19 years because if I gave up meat, I could eat a lot more cake, right? Yeah, so I did a swap out. Number 10, in the back, number 10. Write to me. Yes, I wanna hear from you guys. That's why I give you all my data. It's really important for me to understand how your health journey is going when you experiment with these things. And like I said, you already have enough in our everyday busy lives. I don't want people to be stressed out. This list is not to make you stressed out. This list is a gentle guidance. If you want the information, it's there. If you wanna try it, it's there. The scientific data and all my research, it's in my book. It covers the four anti-cancer hailing therapies that are food-based. It covers my weight loss journey. It covers a basic nutrition class, what I eat now, what I don't, and why. All right, that's it. Mingle, eat.